as an Albertan, when I look at what is possible in this province and what is being squandered by this horrifically incompetent UCP government we've got right now, and as I've listened to Albertans from every corner of the province suggest that maybe I've got something, maybe I've got the experience and the expertise and the skills to be able to move forward and to help us build that better Alberta that we deserve. Huh. It's, it was big, big choice, but I'm really excited to be here. That is former Calgary Mayor Nahed Nenshi throwing his hat into the ring to replace outgoing Alberta NDP leader Rachel Notley. Nenshi served as mayor for more than a decade, from 2010 to 2021. He'll compete against four MLAs who have announced their candidacy, along with the president of the Alberta Federation of Labour, Gil McGowan, for the party's top job. So what does his entrance do to the race, and what does it mean more broadly for politics in the province of Alberta? Let's bring in the front bench. Saeed Selvan is the vice president and practice lead of public affairs at National Public Relations. Shakir Chambers worked in Prime Minister Stephen Harper's office before becoming a policy advisor to the International Trade Minister. He's now a principal at Ernst Cliff Strategies. Kathleen Monk is the former director of communications to the late Jack Layton. She's now the principal owner of Monk & Associates. And next to her is Marika Walsh. She's a senior political reporter with the Globe and Mail. Hi, everybody. Good Thank to you. see you. Kathleen, I'll start with you because you've helped out uh, with the mm -hmm. Alberta NDP in, in past mm -hmm. iterations. Yeah. How big of a deal do you think Nenshi's entrance into this race is? Well, it's exciting for sure. And then there were six. You know, <laughs> it's really going to make it a bit of a, a spirit to debate and I think that surely it's now shifted the conversation around the Alberta leadership debate around to not just around policies and who's representing what but who can win and who can form government and I think that's exciting for a new democratic and a progressive leadership race that's happening out there and there's no doubt that Nenshi brings some star power it is national news like we are talking about it here and elsewhere but also he brings a record right his record in Calgary and he brings that critical electoral district of that of that Calgary area Kathleen Gainley is also from Calgary and she has already started firing at him actually earlier in the week in terms of sending out some negative emails about Nenshi's record when he was last mayor. But remember, he when he was mayor, he was winning those ridings in the Calgary area, 12 out of 14, knocking it out of the park. So I think it's changing the conversation. I think it's going to make it more interesting. I think to Kathleen's point, Marika, Calgary is really important in the last election. As she was mentioning, you know, it ended up being that they couldn't sweep Calgary to the degree they needed to, yeah. given that the NDP wasn't going to win in the rural part of the uh, province they had Edmonton, but but Calgary was kind of uh, seen as a misstep if you talk to people in the campaign after, particularly when they introduced the prospect of hiking corporate taxes. How do you think Nenshi might sort of change the game there at all? Well, I think he has the potential to sell his campaign as being able to answer that question, as being able to answer the question of Calgary. But I think he has several leaps to get to before he gets to actually have that discussion of whether he can win Calgary, and that's winning the NDP race. And he's an outsider. He's actually not a dipper. He's not a, a dyed-in-the-wool new Democrat. So, so he doesn't have that base, that structure, that even that party culture. Mm -hmm. And so I'll be interested to see how he has an outsider influences the race. Clearly, though, it is sort of a jolt of spotlight and attention that is really helpful for the NDP overall. It's something that the NDP in Ontario didn't have. And I think that you can see just from how badly they're doing compared to the Liberals that that didn't necessarily serve them, that they didn't have a, a real race with that real attention that comes with it. I also thought, and we heard a little bit of it in that clip, in that interview that my colleague Todd Vanderhaven did with uh, with Nenshi a little bit earlier, Shakir, the idea that he's like, I can get under Danielle Smith's skin, sort of positioning himself, as Kathleen mentioned, not just against other people running to replace Rachel Notley, but ultimately to run against Danielle Smith. Yeah, I agree. I mean, listen, he's a very charismatic individual, great in front of the microphone, obviously has name recognition. But I think talking about Daniel Smith, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, right? I think Marika makes a great point. I mean, you're talking about a guy who self-identifies as a purple leader, right? And I, if one thing I know about leadership races, I know Alberta has a different kind of flavor with their NDP, but it becomes an ideological purity kind of thing, right? Who can kind of hew most of the party kind of mandate and the party kind of structure. And I'm not sure Mayor Nenshi kind of fits that mold, given he identifies as partly conservative, partly liberal. And if you look at even the letter he put out earlier today, maybe I might be reading too much into it, but sure, it was colored orange, but no mention of the Alberta NDP in any of his branding, and even the actual party itself is only mentioned on the second last line. So I'm not so sure how much he plays into this whole Alberta NDP kind of narrative, and I think that might be a detriment to him to actually get ahead and actually face Daniel Smith in the next election. Yeah, it's, I mean, it goes back to the question, uh, Saeed, that I think Marika raised, which is around 
like can an outsider essentially punch through from a national perspective as Kathleen said we're talking about it he, he certainly has the name recognition outside of Alberta as well as within Alberta but but he he isn't somebody from within the party and at times that can matter particularly in a party race not necessarily a general but a party race I think it can matter, but I think the challenge for some of the other candidates that we're hearing in some of their rhetoric is that they want to try their best to distance themselves from Rachel Notley, especially given the past 10 years and the 10 year record that Rachel's had and also distance themselves from the last election. So really focusing on the disenfranchised um, voters out there, people who don't feel uh, a part of the NDP, it may actually be a strength for Nahid Nenshi to actually come in there and say, look, um, I've been mayor, I've been so three times before in a row, I'm in a position where I can unite people, bring them together, but also bring in new memberships. Is it gonna be an uphill battle for him? For sure, but he has some solid name recognition. And looking at some recent polls, it looks like he's polling quite well, not just within the NDP, but also in Alberta as a whole as well. So I think that there's a lot of momentum on his side right now. Does it end up being, Kathleen, that everyone kind of turns their attention to him, even the other candidates, and, and starts making their critique? I mean, you mentioned they've already sent out yeah. some. And does that almost inform his own positioning? Well, it would give him momentum. But remember, he only still only has six weeks to get in yeah. the memberships and get those memberships bought. But I'm reminded of the situation of Alison Redford, when she was also not considered to be a winner. And this was in the conservative, mm -hmm. Alberta conservative race, progressive conservative race many years ago. And she won by getting outside membership votes, right? She went yeah. to the teachers' unions and she said, you know, support me and she won and that was a bit of an upset so it can happen yeah marika that's a really good point and i think also um i mean I, it, it just depends like purple is uh, not necessarily a characterization we associate outside of alberta with a lot of political parties but in alberta the ndp is not necessarily the same as you know the ndp no. that we identify with federally no but they actually go to great lengths to distance themselves from the ndp federally i, I think you know nenshi very clearly makes his pitch for new members at the end of his video that he released today, it says, go sign up. He's not really making a pitch to current NDP members as much as he says, go sign up to become a member over and over again. He says that at the end. So I think he has sort of the spotlight to be able to do that in a way that a lesser known person would have a harder, a harder shot at doing that. But it is a hurdle to do. On the other side, he's not fighting in the same sort of basket of NDP members that all these other candidates are. So. Absolutely. I don't think he would be making this calculation if he thought he didn't have any shot at all. Um, it will be interesting to see how he makes a transition to partisan politics, though, because we know from many other people who have done that, that it's a hard um, sort of box to end up fitting into sometimes. If you're used to being able to call your own shots, set your own agenda, and then you decide to conform to one party's sort of guardrails, it can be very challenging. We saw that with the Liberals several times federally. Yeah, and he's, I think he's actually more, I mean, having interviewed him before, like he's, even in his capacity as mayor, he could be partisan, like he can be biting Shakir in the way in which he characterizes things. But to Marika's point, like it's, it's been in a very different venue and it's been a, a, in accordance with how he actually feels versus uh, a, the position of a party. So like the, the clash or the way in which he navigates his own brand and the party brand will be something to watch for too, I think. Absolutely, and I think a lot of voters will find it refreshing when a politician kind of speaks their mind and doesn't really fit into a box and doesn't really just abide by strict party ideology. But my point is that at the end of the day, he has to win that leadership. And my view is that to win that leadership, he might have to be this kind of rigid, rigid ideologue or fall behind the other candidates in the race. So we'll see how that plays itself out. I do think he has a massive disadvantage. I think Marika mentioned it. You know, starting, he only has six weeks left to sell new memberships if that's his ball game. So how many members is he actually going to get out to kind of get his name out there, get the memberships sold, and have them vote for him uh, come, come uh, election day? It's a tough uphill battle, but again, he probably made that calculation uh, that he can do well in Calgary and probably do well in some of the other urban areas, but it is going to be a tough uphill battle for him. We also kind of touch, uh, say, Eid, on the relationship or, or lack thereof with the federal NDP. He has, I mean, at times you, you'd sort of identify his positioning with the federal liberals more so than, than anyone else, I think, though he's been quick to say, hey, like, like as everyone's pointed out, I'm purple. I don't necessarily, 
you know, align myself one way or the other. But I think that, um, you know, there was lots of speculation, for example, in, when he resigned as mayor, that he might be a candidate for the federal liberals in a federal election. He quickly put, you know, the, the, the damper on that. But I wonder how that kind of relationship will play out and how far he goes to try and distance himself from some of the resource positions that Jagmeet Singh has taken. Yeah, and I think that's why he came out swinging against Danielle Smith. I think he wants to give voters and card-carrying NDP members a preview of what it would be like to have him as leader of the party. He knows that he has that minor obstacle to overcome, which is that previous baggage with the federal liberals. Um, but I think that given his position right now and where he sits, he knows that if he goes out there and promotes himself as not just the one to lead the party, but potentially beat Daniel Smith in general election, he can position himself well enough to hopefully uh, drive those votes. And again, he's looking for voters outside of the party, given what he's been saying um, and trying to engage people who may not have been uh, with the party beforehand. So just going out there, getting out the vote, he's got six weeks, but I think it's doable given, uh, given his name recognition. Intense six weeks ahead. I'm going to take an intense two minutes and be back on the other end of a commercial break with the front.